Hi, everyone. Today is Thursday, December 9th of 2021, and we're here for our weekly crypto review with Moo Ant. How's it going, Moo? It's going great. Um, I'm just kind of ch checking the charts here. A lot of our favorites are, uh, are running today. Um, I see that Gala Games is up uh, almost 7%. Um, there's some other ones, too, doing pretty well. So uh looks like Sandbox is recovering nicely as well. So um, I'm doing great, uh, Sam. Um, very, very excited about this market. Um, I'm getting excited for pretty soon here until the end of the year. And I'm getting excited um, kind of about Q1 of next year. So I, I'm just stoked. I'm very excited. I think the best is yet to come. And I, I, I can barely contain myself. I'm kind of just uh, dotting my... Uh, eyes crossing my t's make sure i'm uh where i want to be in certain allocations and um i don't know just super happy about it um where do you feel we're at uh from now until the end of the year or q1 of next year well again you know the cryptocurrency markets are just going to rock the numbers for 2021 and what's going to happen is that you're going to even have the 80 year olds showing up at their brokerage firms and their investment houses and going i want my crypto how yeah. can you get my crypto and they have like tens of millions of dollars and they're like ah. so what do you think they're gonna do <laughs> that's exactly. right you hear that sucking noise to canada right all those yep. exchange traded funds yay canada for getting on in front of that yeah i wish i could tell you exactly what it was but the the maxine waters uh congressional hearing yesterday was sam bankman freed and uh uh, I believe Brian Brooks and uh, several others was just fascinating. So I've been watching some of those clips. Um, but, you know, every time there's sort of a, uh, a crypto hearing, um, and I, I thought it was great. I thought the crypto professionals really set uh, the Congress people and the lawmakers in the United States straight about uh, how we're losing, um, you know, this technological uh, war. And, um, very, very interesting. I thought it was great. And obviously, you know, a few of those people were so clueless. So I would encourage everyone to uh, let's start voting out those uh, clueless ones, shall we? Mm -hmm. So first one here with 24 votes uh, from Pony Pete. Dear both, thank you for all your work. When my brother asked me, what are the three best 100x coins for the next three years? What should my answer be? 100 100x coins Jeez, yeah. you know what there's going to be so many of them like there really is so many i mean even the big ones that we're buying into so pony pete i mean help yourself to really any of the ones that we're talking about like you know dot i feel like i mean i feel like i'll get off in the hundreds of dollars but i think it's going to be an ethereum price it's going to have the same type of growth into the thousands of dollars that Ethereum has had. Solana will as well. Um, I don't own any Solana. I can't own all of them. I mean, it would just be crazy for me. I mean, Frig, I can't even get my soul off of KuCoin. <laughs> <laughs> I have it everywhere, though. There's some on yeah. my MetaMask. There's, you know. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, I'll be I'll be working on that again. But I'm just shaking my head. I'm like, oh yeah, and I got to close my Who Buy Global account with my theta audit don't want to lose that again i love it yeah uh, yeah, yeah thanks pony pete for the question i i really don't know i don't deal with yeah. multiples or full bags or any yeah. of that i just know good coins to be in uh and projects um so can't help you but um bill d says hey guys uh for the new people coming on board in uh 2022 how would you recommend they build their portfolio question mark i have dot eth matic tezos link Theta, ADA, and Terra Luna as my foundational coins. What would you add as the up and comers? Thank you so much. Hmm. Well, I really like that list, um, especially uh, Matic and Tezos. Matic has turned out to be a really big star, hasn't it? It has, absolutely. And the best is yet to come. Mm -hmm. You know, today is ZK. Uh, um, ZK Day, so ZK Sync and Polygon and Polygon. I saw a news article that they're allocating $1 billion to the um, uh, ZK rollups there. So um, there will be a lot of funding there to do a lot of cool things. And uh, I'm telling you, I think Maddox is going to be a monster. That's how I would describe it. So can you review with me again the difference between um, the ZK and optimistic rollups? Yeah, <clears throat> but I'd almost rather not do it. <laughs> 
if you don't mind. Okay. I'd like to save it for tomorrow, maybe. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, let's just let's just say there's kind of a different batch in uh, uh, affirmation, um, the way they get uh, confirmed, and it's and, and both are necessary, and it's not like one is better than the other. Um, unless you're getting something from the other side, but they're kind of both needed for different reasons. And I, you know, um, you know, yeah. yeah. It's like with mm -hmm. Ethereum, a lot of people say, oh, nobody will pay those gas fees. And I mean, I never knew what the big deal was about gas fees because I don't buy my cryptos a hundred hundreds at a time. You know, right. I'm a hodler. So when I move stuff, I'm moving like usually between four and five figures at one yeah. time. So I'm not like going, oh my God, it's 127 bucks, right? But if I was buying, you know, $350 worth of cryptos, buying on layer zero would be crazy, you know? Yeah. Go on a layer two, use matcha, you know, do all yeah. that you can to try to find the least expensive way to get your hands. Because a lot of people are dollar cost averaging, which I still recommend. I mean, I've jumped into stuff before it's gone straight up and I've paid like crazy fees just out of pure, the pure laziness of like, mm -hmm. just you know, it's like I only had time just to run to the Exodus wallet, bring it up and then swap it. And I mean, those are like bend me over fees. So, <laughs> right. I mean, you know, but I mean, if it's like triple it, the price, I mean, my, my stellar went from, I don't know, it was like, it was seven cents and then it dropped to four and then it ran like really big after that. And I did that on a swap. So I mean, it's that last minute thing. So you really got to think about the fees sometimes when you're buying. But you again, just to finish Bill's question, um, which other ones should he be adding? Um, I would add some metaverse stuff. I'd probably get some uh, super farm. I'm still liking Reef. Reef is still one. Tower pulled back a lot. I don't know if it started running again or not. Just add a couple of those ones, the unloved ones. Yeah. Um, boy, I would agree with that. Everything on the list here looks good. Uh, I, I think you have to, especially with Visa coming forward and saying that they're going to be using Avalanche for a bunch of things. I think you got to have some Avalanche. Uh, I think you got to have Solana. I think, uh, I, I, you know, the Super Farm is a great one to have. Um, so I would just give three, I guess, to add to the link or add to the list. Um, I get distracted by chain link. And just to reiterate, and I, I guess I'll give a simple explanation. I don't want to dodge the question, but I don't want to confuse. So optimistic rollups kind of assume that everyone acts in good faith, right? But the geek, the ZK rollups basically ensure that that's the case. So um, the rollup basically moves bundles of transactions to layer two and, and generates a validity proof for every bundle. Um, so like I said, it's not like one's better than the other. It's just a method of doing it. But uh, we can we can talk more in depth about that more nerdy well, stuff it's, later. It's just like when you're buying on Ethereum, like I was saying before, if you're doing large sums, the fees are and there there are companies that will pay for that, mm -hmm. right? Because they're moving and they need that stability. They need to be on layer zero. They need the price stability. They need the liquidity. Security. Yeah. They need the security mm -hmm. and, and that's what you get with Ethereum. And when mm -hmm. you start migrating into these layer twos, you get, you know, a l less expensive price. Um, you can manage the slippage on it. Um, you know, maybe you don't need it right now. That'll definitely work in your favor if you can, you know, go in and put a price in somewhere and, you know, and have that uh, less expensive price given to you because you know it happened in the middle of the night when there was a lull in the market mm -hmm. um there's so many different options that we have available to us now that we never used to have a long time ago and i just i don't like to see these little camps forming of different people saying that this is the right and it just it's like oh my gosh like wait until companies come out with a way to calculate the net asset value of your crypto portfolio so that you can borrow on it. Oh Absolutely. my gosh, this is just, you know, like yeah. there, there's going to be, you know, and by then, let's say the market's starting to run charge towards $8 trillion. Mm -hmm. Well, how much of that do you think is going to start, um, you know, sort of permeating into, you know, the purchase of real estate, the, you know, purchase of businesses, the, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, just the economic boom that it's going to cause, you know, people are even talking about, you know, purchasing, purchasing mining properties, right? I'm like, Oh, you're not enough of a gold bug. You want to buy a mine now? 
<laughs> that's the ultimate gold gold bug right uh yeah. when, when you're thinking about buying mines i yeah. uh, i just want to um reiterate what uh human avatar said over on the side this is kind of nerdy but let's go ahead and show it uh there's a hackathon event going on uh, it started december 6th and it runs i think until january 31st um yeah january 31st so um you know uh there's all sorts of prizes um you know, basically a total prize pool of uh, half a million dollars. So if you're nerdy and you want to uh, participate, um, you know, there's lots of opportunities to do that. So this is the hackathon with uh, Morales Hackathon and Avalanche. So um, I'll include this link for anybody that's interested. Um, give me one second. Oh, I didn't want to show that. Um, as evolution makes its way through the cryptosphere, how do you see some of our favorite cent coins doing, namely XYL, Reef, and Vet? Well, I mean, I think that they're um, cryptocurrencies that have established themselves now with the volume. Um, let's just take a look at them. You'll notice I have uh, Veritasium up. <laughs> Too bad well, people are being uh, misled by some yeah. of this, but yeah. Yeah, I I was uh, surprised actually about that. But anyways, uh, yeah, let's see. All right, so that's 3.6 cents. So that's corrected back nicely. But I mean, look at the volume. It's 16 million, which is still fairly early days. But I mean, back here. When you were getting involved in it, it was only, um, geez, I'm just trying to think, half a penny. It was like yeah. half a half a million dollars in volume. So that's like the big difference right now. But it has corrected back nicely. It's down here, which is where I would say the um, when you look at these points here, it looks like there's um, some support around that range. So I think that the market is headed back up and I think it's going to take XYO back up with it. Mm -hmm. But you can see like these ones are, I call them funny bunnies on steroids because of the sharp ups and downs. And what's the other one there, Reef? And that, I was looking at Reef the other day actually because I think it's time for that one to go on another leg up. It's just at two cents now, so or 1.9. Right. So still, like again, it spent most of its time under four cents. So you've had plenty of opportunity and time to scoop it up. It's down uh 66.6% since its all time high was which was just on March 15th. Mm -hmm. Um so that one still has quite a bit of upside to it if you're dollar cost averaging in, because it gets a little bit more dangerous when you start, when you FOMO in and you're buying something when it's hot. I mean, you know, the odds of it pulling back are pretty good. Um, but we see that human, you know, we have that human trait where or characteristic. We can't help it sometimes. You start to panic when it's going up. You think that you're sure. going to miss out. Okay, and um, and what was the other one? Vet. Vet. Oh, yes, that's one of my favorites. Because, I mean, they're currently using Vet. So it's the use case ones. And its volume is huge, though, 325 million. So, again, <clears throat> we get in back in uh, August of 2019 when it was 0 0.004 sense and change it went down a bit sometimes to closer to the four tenths of a penny but when you look at the volume it was only 23 million right now it seems that its consolidation is at 10 cents and it's 343 million so and it's 68 percent down from its all-time high so again when I talk about buying the ones that are unloved, this is what I'm talking about. There's some pretty fantastic opportunities with um, all of these cryptos. So thanks so much for that great question. Who was that? It was uh, Arcane Voodoo. Arcane Voodoo. Yeah, I listed those three. And those three, like I said, if somebody's new coming in, um, those three are definite as far as how much they're down compared to their all-time high 
and how they'll speed past that again when the next influx of money comes in to the space. In Arcane Voodoo, I noticed this morning, just as I was taking a look at the Psychic Nerds uh, Patreon and Discord, it looks like uh, there might be an issue with your rights. So if you could just contact me privately and I'll take a look, okay? I just happened to notice it as I was checking a few things. Uh, Chris has got uh, uh, some questions here about different uh, price predictions. Do you see for Super, Reef, and XYO and Soul by the end of the year and the end of April 2022? Well, I see more of the highs or like what my jump off price would be for these different cryptocurrencies. Um, we could try to nail a timeline. Mm, I have not been super successful with that. But hey, you know what? We can try that for fun. But I don't feel like Super Reef XYO or Soul will be anywhere near their all time highs by April of 2022. I feel like I think you're really going to be shocked at how early it is. For this, you know, super could be, you know, one hundred and thirty dollars. So really, for this this entire list, significantly up, whether we're talking about the end of the year or April of twenty twenty two, and you don't see the April of twenty two necessarily being the top for these, right? So that's great. Um, hope that answers your question, Chris. Uh, and I will talk more about the Veritasium stuff. I just need to wait until later to do it, maybe the last 30 minutes or something like that. Uh, Freaking crypto says, so SHIB is planning a large effort of token burning by many holders, partners, and investing in many efforts of gaming studios, et cetera. Do you see this burn happening and achieving the next big increase in token prices? Uh, no, I don't have any information on SHIB. I don't mess with things like SHIB. Uh, I'm sorry, people, if they're down, you know, 60%. Uh, Scotty E says, hey, Sam and Muant, uh, what are your thoughts or insights on many large whales holding massive amounts of coins like Do Doge Elon or Shiba Inu? Many thanks. I think it's easy to hold large coins that you create yourselves. I don't think, I think when there's zero dollars invested, all you got to do is press some buttons. Um, I received a message from one of, well, it's not one of those coins, but it would be like a similar idea. Remember, there's over 10,000. Yeah. And when I checked on, I was like, you know what? Just for the heck of it, I'm going to check on it, this coin and see, you know, what it's all about. Sure. And 100% of the information that I was looking at mm -hmm. was their marketing plan. There was no um, developers, no meetings with big company names, no nothing. Yeah. It was all, you know gonna flood twitter on this date and you know they had that was their anyways i was really yeah. not impressed and i um like i said i don't i don't have anything to do with those projects because they're just like i just get a blank stare on that it's like oh, okay well yep. you know what i'm it doesn't excite me like when i see polka dot i see it being used and people are excited about it and it's you know it's changing the way business is done in the world you know, this mm -hmm. is exciting stuff, mm -hmm. um, lifting people out of poverty and, but other stuff, I just, nothing. It's just, well, you know what? And, and I've said before that I would rather go with what I know since there's enough of that going around. In fact, there's so many, so many things that I really like. Like I love Avalanche is great. Solana, um, Wonderland, all the, a lot of stuff that you've talked about, Alluvium, but I don't have any of that stuff because mm -hmm. then I'd be getting into such a crazy amount of trying to manage cryptos, you know, but I still can give you sort of a, yeah, the, I feel really excited about that. I'm tapping into a lot of excitement in the future. That means an upward price. Oh yeah, this one's going to be really big. People on the street will know this name. Like this is the type of stuff that I'm looking for. And I, and I just, I don't get any of that with this uh, Doji Elon or Shiba Inu. And it's not to say that you won't get any on it, but it was the same as like um, a while ago when someone asked me about Hexcoin. And I was like said, and what I got from the people on the other side was that, you know, the person who created and his friends would make a lot of money. Yeah. But I mean, that wouldn't include someone like me and nobody, right? you know, the average person going in. And that was the information that I got from the other side. So, and then, but sometimes I get nothing at all, which is the case here. Yeah. Um, 
you know, Scotty, the, the only thing that's kind of like what the answer I gave it to the last question, I don't participate in things like Doji Lan or Shiba Inu or, or meme coins, really. So I can't help. Um, next one, wise growing tree, dear salmon move, following my setup <clears throat> of a couple of strong nodes, please be aware that indeed the node can't be redeemed. The capital is lost and claiming rewards is costly because of the ETH gas fees. The payout is 0 0.1 strong a day for one node payouts uh, will decrease over time. Is it a scam? Question mark. So let's stop there. Um, is it a scam, Sam? Well, I've um, never gotten positive vibes before about something that was a scam. Exactly. And uh, I think that I saw it as a very low risk reward um, for what they you know, where it pays itself off in three and a half months. But I think that that's more related to being just an early adopter, the same as a lot of people would rather call, you know, the Dogecoin a scam um, more so because they didn't get involved in it when it was, you know, one thousandth of a penny, you know. Oh, no, it must be a scam. It would have been too easy for me to buy it. And then have it made in the shade for the rest of my life. It sucks that you did that. You know, it's just, it's human nature. That's why you have to try to keep your mouth shut about these opportunities that you find because people just won't believe it a lot of times. And um, these opportunities as well are not a good idea if you don't have a large portfolio. I mean, most of us are just rolling our profits. Yeah, just diversifying into, out. Yeah, trying yeah. to support networks, trying to... Um, you know, uh, you know, gain some passive income, some yeah. things like this. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I, and I like that this guy wanted to allow the little person to front run an opportunity instead of selling out, you know, and um, the same with like Gala. Yeah, they exactly. allow, they allow us an opportunity to hold a node instead of going to a venture capitalist fund and then selling to them and then letting them make all the money from being early up first. And I think that this is a great concept and this is not uncommon in the crypto space, but there are a lot of scams, you know, and you, you have to do your research like I did. With, Absolutely. I mean, I don't, I don't accept, I don't represent any coins or tokens for payment. I never have, but I do get a couple of uh, times a week that I'm approached. Muant is approached as well to endorse all different the coins and they always start with oh we've been watching your channel a while we love your material very generic and then you know we just started this exchange and you know if you could take a look and then you know give us a plug then we'll pay you in the exchange's coin yep you know and i mean i don't do that because you know what if i'm telling you to go over to something that's scammy i mean you know anything that i'm talking to you guys about i've investigated myself and I'm not getting money through the back door to give it a yay or a nay. I mean, even for Bitfi, I would not accept anything while we were in the uh, investigation phase of it as a group, you know, using the wallet, seeing if there was any problems with it, customer service, all that kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and I like the fact that um, you can keep the private keys of this wallet as well Good. so that no matter what happens on the other side of things even if things are like great right now with the company mm -hmm. if you're able to hold the private keys for your wallet you can always extract your stuff yeah, yeah nothing's ever going to happen to your money so that's you know, good but we all did that together um but again you know you have to look into strong yourself and yeah. again understand the people who are investing in these types of things if I lose 100% of my capital, that's okay. Because I just took $10,000 and put it, I just got two or 9,000. It was $9,000. I got two notes. And then, you know, if it pays for itself in three and a half months, and then I'm just into to, uh, positive credit after that, then that's okay. But if not, if it doesn't work out, if it all folds in on itself in six months from now, I mean, I don't have 10 nodes. I just have two. And uh, I did feel like the price of the strong node was going to increase back to what it originally was. I just wanted to give folks who uh, maybe felt a bit deflated paying that higher price earlier 
that that was okay and to dollar cost average down, which is what a lot of people end up doing a lot of times when something that they've investigated really want to be a part of and it goes down in price. So they have a choice. Do I dollar cost average down or do I just say, okay, I'm going to sit here with this and wait for, um, you know, now nine months to pay off my investment or whatever it worked out to be. So, yeah. yeah. So I don't want to spend much more time in this, but uh, <clears throat> some thoughts that come to mind is, uh, I, I mean, if you're experiencing high ETH gas fees, are you trying to withdraw every day? Because that's probably not a good idea. Uh, and, you know, the cheapest fees in the week are typically like, you know, early Saturday morning, early Sunday morning, Eastern Standard. Uh, so that could be an idea. Um, I don't really know what else to say. Um, you know, I guess I, I'm curious why they're not implementing a layer two. Maybe they are. Maybe that's the whole polygon thing that's coming. Uh, I'm sure that would help. Um yeah, so I guess I guess I just don't know enough about it. Um, to finish off this question, just because it was such a mammoth question, uh, also says wondering if Gala Nodes has the same setup. No, my understanding is that after the Gala Nodes sell out, your node licenses will turn into NFTs, and you can sell you can sell off those those nodes. Um, um, and then uh, they say not sure, but we are maybe on a better way long term with our staking coins like Tezos dot ADA algo best witches. I don't know. I think Sam explained it pretty well. These kind of no things that we've been doing and talking about are, are for people already uh, diversifying people already kind of, um, y you know, um, looking for passive income. Uh, people yeah. that are yeah so yeah and i might not be doing this if i was 70 years old exactly and living off of this either right i mean let's be straight about that i mean we like to examine some things that are you know riskier we're already we were all listen the stuff that we're we're in now that we got for nothing i like to point out to people how much risk you were taking back when the volume was only a few hundred thousand in 24 hours like that's when you want to find stuff now when it's yeah, like man. 16 million every 24 hours and and or 300 million you know mm -hmm. every 24 hours now you've got it made i mean now right. it's probably going to you know keep going because and it has that liquidity right that that's yeah. the golden ring in cryptos <laughs> is liquidity it matters it really yeah. matters uh and you know i'll talk about that more later why it matters because you know on paper you could be anywhere but if you can't actually sell it then it it doesn't really matter. Rahul says, hey, Sam, how high do you see Solana going in this bull run? In this, uh, at current price, it feels like ETH. Uh, a year ago at 200, I would actually say it's ETH of last cycle, last four-year cycle, having cycle. Do you see Solana reaching the level of ETH it, that ETH is at now? What are your thoughts? Oh, yeah. I mean, Solana, um, Polkadot, um, Cardano. Cardano in the hundreds. I didn't, I didn't necessarily see it in the thousands. So I'll just correct myself there. But still, again, something that is going to be following in the footsteps of Ethereum, because again, they do something that Ethereum isn't doing. It's a service that people want, you know, so people are going to use it and not one chain is going to rule them all. There will be a couple of main chains and Solana will be one. And like I said, Polkadot and Cardano, um, a few others. There's going to be a lot to choose from because the market's just, you know, the, the, the it's not more pieces of the pie. It, the, the pie is getting bigger too. You got to remember too, the, the pie, the pie was like this when we got in, right? And now it's like this, it keeps expanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as more cryptos are created, the, the amount of money coming into cryptos is also increasing. So we have that balancing it off. Um, you are seeing some money bleeding from some of the older projects. And that's just really profit taking is what's happening is that people are. And I mean, there's probably some people in the room as well that have, you know, sold off maybe some of their Ethereum to buy Solana. Sure. Because they're looking to spread their bets and not have all of their, you know, because Ethereum may have grown to, you know, be 70% of some people's portfolios. And it's like, you know, there's other options out there. So if mm -hmm. you do have some Ethereum or you do have some profit that you need to roll into something, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with investing in Solana. If you have the time and attention to add another cryptocurrency to your stable. 
Thanks, Sam. Um, Matt Solenko says, dear there, it seems to me touching the three trillion mark of the total market cap for a sec wasn't a huge deal. The current state of the market is rather bleak as Bitcoin's top 69K is most likely already in and the BTC's bear market has most likely already kicked in. I would disagree with that. Uh, Matt Solenko. Uh, and then he says, uh, what and when could resurrect the disrupted victorious march of the altcoins when BTC is no longer pulling the cart up the hill? We've already seen uh, ETH uh, to BTC ratio just explode and a lot of altcoins exploding against uh, BTC. Um, so <clears throat> when BTC is no longer pulling the cart up the hill. Any more precise insights rather than the often repeated, it's all going up, up, up will be much appreciated. Thank you. Well, uh, so Michael, my portfolio has uh, been going up, up, up all year. Um, and really it's been going up, up, up since I got into crypto. So I don't know what to say. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't hold Bitcoin. So, and I never saw it as being the lead. And I felt like Ethereum would flip Bitcoin and we're seeing that happen. So I mean, Matt Zelenko, I'm sorry if you're still holding a lot of Bitcoin. I mean, I don't have any. I, if I at, went around to all my exchanges, I already talked about this, and added up all my Bitcoin, I might have like 0.2 of a Bitcoin, right? If I went to all the exchanges, all the wallets, because, you know, Bitcoin early on, that's what you had to have to buy half sure. of. I mean, Bitcoin is what I got to buy my Doge coin off of the Bittrex. Yep. So, you know, I, I had some. But I'm sorry if you're still holding it. I mean, what can I say? I people, um, I I only guaranteed like twenty thousand for Bitcoin. Actually, I didn't know if it would hit a hundred thousand or not for sure. So you know, again, if you're still holding it and you don't have any of those metaverse, you know, you got no super, you got no phantasma. I mean, oh my god! I opened up my MetaMask. I almost threw up. Like, what? I was like, what? what? And then I think one of my kids was walking by and they were looking at my face. What's wrong, mom? <laughs> and what's happened is that, you know, it was like the day before it was like this amount. And then I opened it up like a week later and it was less amount. And I, because I don't pay attention to that stuff. So I don't know what Mad like is holding. Maybe a lot of Not Bitcoin sure. and, you know, thanks for that opportunity. About XRP, so maybe, well, Matt Zelenko has been here a while. So I, you know, like at least I would say like over six months. So, I am, you know what, but somebody, I did do a reading with someone the other day who still held two full Bitcoin. So I am, she has since like dumped one of them at least and bought <laughs> some of the stuff that we were talking about that has since gone up, up, up. So yeah, I think Bitcoin um, is going to be around for a long time. It's just not going to be the lead one and you're just going to see, well, I'm very proud of how Ethereum has performed during this time and um I'm so glad that that's where I dumped a lot of my Doge profits was into Ethereum. Yay. Yeah. Um, Crypto Cato uh, says, hey, Sam and Moo. Sam, I believe you mentioned recently that our next stop on the way to 8 trillion market cap was 3.6 trillion. And then another pullback before going up. Do you see this happening in December or January? Oh, I don't know. I'm just going with the numbers, just like um, the crash with the Dow. Like we're, that's, I don't feel that like that's going to come until we're over 40. So that's what I'm sticking to with the market cap. Um, but I'm really excited about the direction we're moving in. I'm just, you know, just day after day, all of the announcements and, and people. Um, oh, and every time, like even the guy who um, does the driver, the car service here, he's mm -hmm. so excited about cryptos. He's oh, like cool. laughing because he's looking into it now, right? He's researching it. Yeah. And he's really, really excited about it. So people who were kind of like, oh, yeah, that's really interesting. You do blockchain and stuff. You're interested in blockchain. And now they're like, oh, my gosh, that crypto. That's just crazy. It's so interesting. Did you hear about? And they're just, just so excited. <laughs> it's like it's like a new convert. Right. And I'm right. seeing that with like people out in the general population. Not a whole lot yet. But, you know, the drip, 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 right? It's starting. Sure. So get excited. It's very soon. And who knows what people are going to be talking about over the holidays, right? I don't think right. we're going to have like this typical 
you know, sell off that people talk about. I think that there's going to be a lot of new money coming in. So I did see a time where people would be selling, but as quick as they were, were selling, new money was coming in and snapping up those, those good deals. So they didn't last long. Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Uh, this is pizzas. Would you rather game? Uh, hey, Sam and Moo, imagine you were me. Would you rather have 1.5 ETH, 15,000 Atlas, or one strong node? Thank you. Um, I would go for the one and a half ETH just because I spent some on getting the strong node and the gala nodes. So. I absolutely agree with Sam. That's exactly what I would say. And uh, I just ran the numbers. And if we were to crunch them right now, ETH, uh, the 1.5 ETH would be the best thing. Uh, but I, I get Sam's answer for sure. I would say the 1.5 ETH. Uh, Hamid says, hey, Sam and Moo, is it possible, one, to create a room in Discord for token swap and token update on Sam's favorites so none will miss an opportunity update or swap? Um, and two or to have the first two minutes on the weekly review with Moo in this subject, since he is working in the crypto, he could give us his insight. Uh, thank you both. So I don't, I don't really talk much about swaps. Uh, that's up to any, any, any individual person. And do you mean a project called token swap or you mean just, you know, information oh, swapping I, tokens? Cause I don't do that. I, I know what he means. Kind of okay. I know what he means. He's talking about airdrops. Oh, um, yeah. In the Psychic Nerds, we have an airdrop section. I believe up on the Sam Jammers, there's an airdrop section as well. Um, right, Sam? I believe so. Um, so, okay. Yeah, if you want that level of involvement, you must be, a, is a Hamid a Psychic Nerd? Um, I don't think so. But okay. we do have an airdrop section. We talk about airdrops all the time. Uh, David Jones, uh, hey, Sam and Mook, do you see crypto.com uh, being bigger or having a larger market cap than Coinbase? Both of you guys' thoughts are welcome. Thanks again. I don't know about that one. Yeah, <clears throat> um, I'm not sure about that one either. I, I can't speak to that, David Jones. Sorry. Um, Way of 64 um, has a Veritasium question. Uh, hey, Sam and Moo, Veritasium is on a substantial run in the last seven days. This is quite surprising. Can either of you see why this is occurring? Thank you both for all that you do for our group. Uh, go ahead, Sam. You got any thoughts? Mm -hmm. there? Well, there was a posting um, on Twitter from Reggie about um, his patent for decentralized finance. Mm hmm being honored that he mm -hmm. is the inventor of it mm -hmm. and you know he is with veritasium so i think a lot of people saw that and then piled on to veritasium yeah um i i wish some of the talking heads would stop talking about this the very token has really nothing to do with the veritasium company the strength of veritasium in my opinion because uh, i know some very intimate details about that company the wonderful people reggie's a great guy um uh, surrounded by very very smart and competent people one of the reasons uh, they've been so successful with the patents is the is the is the quality and strength of uh the patent lawyer there um that really secured and locked some things down for them that needed to be locked down um, so anyway, back, uh, I'd say the number one thing going for the Veritasium company is uh, the strength of the Vedar. Um, you can think of the Vedar uh, being a very, very, very uh, powerful piece of software and the very token just being a token that can run the machine. But the truth is the machine can run and be reconfigured to run on any token. Um, so people should keep that in mind. Um, and that Vedar technology is proprietary uh, to the Veritasium uh, company. Uh, number two, uh, once again, just to reiterate, uh, I would say is the strength of their patent, um, the patents that they hold. Um, so that's what I would say. And I hope people aren't getting confused and I hope people aren't sorely disappointed. Also, I saw Cliff um, make a post somewhere and I'll just kind of read what he said. Uh, by the way, because of uh, recent Reggie Middleton and Veritasium events, I suspect we will hit the forecast temporal marker of the U.S. government coming to talk with Reggie about metals backed people's digital money in or around February of 2022. Any thoughts around any of those things I said, Sam? Well, as many of you know, I held on to my Veritasium because it wasn't like I had like a, you know, 
120 is not a huge stash of Veritasium, right? Some people had a thousand Veritasium or more, um, certainly a lot more than I did. But I just felt like in solidarity with Reggie, I would keep it. And I also felt like it would go up a lot, that something would happen. So even though it seemed like it was all said and done, I knew that the token would go up. And I, I, I would try to surmise how that was and which I probably didn't get it right. It was something to do with, um, you know, him finding a way to compensate the people who lost their money on Veritasium being seized by the US government, that he would find a way. And so maybe this was it, I don't know. I mean, if you wanna sell your Veri, this is definitely a good time to release it out there into the ecosystem but there might be a part two as well i don't know maybe i'll maybe i'll stay in for the game like i said i don't have Absolutely. a huge amount maybe i'll sell half of them and you know get another strong note or something yeah such a degen i gotta stop talking okay yeah all right i, I could add so much information but it's really not appropriate for me to talk in a public forum like this so i, I yeah, can't no. really say too much no more you yet, can't because so you worked on that so it wouldn't be i worked on the vader Yep. yep. So, so I know nice. I know way more than your talking head talking about it. Uh, KC says, uh, hey, Sam and Moo, I created two strong notes. My goal is to continue building up to 10 nodes using its rewards. Which one is the better strategy? Cash out the initial rewards for the next couple of months to recover my capital. This will take longer time period to build another node or apply rewards to build 10 nodes as soon as possible, then recover my capital. I believe Sam mentioned something about strong block may change its pay system down the road. Thank you. Um, I think it's a good idea to um, cash out, but not do it in small amounts because the fees are too high. So um, strong will increase over the next couple of months. It's better for you to take profit on that and then redirect it into like your income from that into other things in the metaverse just so you can spread your bets because there may be a time when the strong nodes are no more and you might lose your initial because they're not allowing you to um, sell them but again i looked at the future of strong i didn't see it going down and i was like well maybe they're just going to reduce their rewards and then they won't be as popular do you know what I mean? So, cause yeah. everything stuff in crypto is like, uh, people are like, oh, I'm just going to keep this forever. It's just going to keep going up forever and ever. And it's like, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that was strong. <laughs> you have to be a little bit strategic. And I appreciate that from the people where, you know, they had me against it at 1200, but then when it was under 500, then I was like, oh yeah, all right, this is, this is looking kind of tasty right now. And especially since it's going to go back up and then I can actually, if I get three strong, I can probably pay off my node even quicker. So, you know, I don't think I would build 10 KC. I think I would take my profits from the two strong nodes that I had once the, once it wasn't so expensive with mm -hmm. the Ethereum, for example, and you said like Saturday evening, like there's times during the week that the gray, is a much much cheaper and sunday morning saturday morning early uh you know, eight, 7 8 a.m eastern standard or at any day throughout the week typically 3 a.m 3 30 a.m is, is pretty cheap so yeah so there you go and tech cowgirl says that she's rolling strong rewards into new nodes until january and then she's splitting rewards every month into other projects as well as uh supporting income so i mean she's got a plan with that money as well um that's what I think is a good strategy. I got into it because it it pays for itself so quickly, then I can continue to use that money to purchase other um, things in the metaverse. And because it's income from it, um, it might make my taxes for 2022 a little bit more complicated, but I'll just make sure I don't have like 20 different nodes in all kinds of different places or I'll just make sure I track it from the start. But keep that in mind as well, that income is tracked differently mm -hmm. than capital gains in most of our, the, our Western countries and where I haven't really had any you know, income earning like that until recently. Um, it's uh, something to consider as well. So yeah, good luck with that, Casey. Yeah. Um, 
Tinkerbell had some thoughts uh, working with some tax preferential uh, professionals over at uh, Kalos um, talking about, you know, starting a business, uh, you know, with your note income, being able to kind of treat the initial investment against some of the profits. Also, you know, uh, taking some of that, uh, the profit money and rolling it into uh, 401ks, <clears throat> things like this. Uh, very interesting ideas. Uh, makes a lot of sense to me, but uh, best solved with a tax professional. But I hope people are kind of uh, wrapping their minds around those things now before the end of the year. Uh, Queen says, hey, Sam and Moo, how are you guys? Uh, Strong Block has now launched Polygon nodes. You need to buy their NFTs to be able to qualify for their Polygon nodes. Do you see them being successful with those nodes? Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, just to add to what Queen said, I think down the road, you won't need the NFTs to do the Polygon nodes, uh, is my understanding. But I'm really not a Strong Block expert at all. I'm still kind of researching. Um, Sam, thoughts? I think we looked at that and those were expensive, weren't they? To yeah. be able to get a Polygon she, node and you could spend, and I would be like, no, no, I'm not giving up any more of my Ethereum. I'm just going to use my income to buy other things. And I think, and I think you're right that they, they are talking about getting rid of, it's just that you won't get the bonuses. See what they're trying to do is they're trying to get you to buy the bonuses ahead of, they're trying to get you to put the money in ahead of time. Yeah. For this bonus money that mm -hmm. you'll get that's all it, that's the only difference is that if you have um these you know silver bronze silver and gold and the bronze are all sold out yeah so just don't bother with that and then just go uh, for they're available the on open C at yeah go ahead I'm, I'm sorry you cut out there um sorry um we might be having an issue with one of our internet connections um uh the yeah, we kind of looked at this. It didn't make much sense to us. We're, we're kind of thinking that the Polygon notes will be available to others uh, eventually. I'm not sure. I don't know anything about timelines. And uh, the cheapest ones, cheapest NFTs, you cannot, the NFTs you can't get th directly through StrongBlock anymore, but they are available out on the open market. And I think the bronze is uh, currently setting at 0.82 ETH. Um, so hopefully that'll help. Eva says, uh, what cloud storage blockchain will be successful? Any of these? or others, Akash, Filecoin, Sia Coin, Storage, or Internext, InterXT, sorry. Uh, I think Filecoin and Sia Coin are fine. Uh, Eva, I would say I, I'm not a big one. I don't like uh, a lot of these types of technologies around the blockchain. I am a blockchain professional. I understand technology very well. And I just think blockchain is not the best uh, mm -hmm kind of use of this technology but uh i would say one that's not even on your list i would say our weave i if i had to pick one uh out of out of these kinds of things uh, i would probably pick our weave i uh, hope that helps um next question you had mentioned the lobster wallet do you feel comfortable sending all xlm there for a drop or would you do half and what do you see for aqua um yeah i don't usually like moving my my stuff around. Um, but yeah, I was willing to do it for Aqua. And um, I don't really see a price for, well, that's like, um, is that Aqua Chain or which one is it? Or Aquarius? It's Aquarius. Okay. I thought, I thought so. Okay. So 793. Let me just show everybody my sure. screen. All right, so this here, um, their 24-hour trading volume is over 4 million. So again, you know, not a huge trading volume. Their number 793. Um, it's very much early days. Um, people are buying it now. It's up quite a bit because you have to have at least one in order to launch the wallet. So that just makes sense that it's going to go up in price as we approach the date um, it might go down a bit now just because where it's been delayed till January the 15th to give people more time. So this one I felt okay about because I felt like because you'd have so much support from the Stellar Foundation, it's when they start um, doing stuff like this that they'll pull up the little guy much of the time. When you look at Stellar being, you know, one of the top 50 coins on coin gecko or coin market cap and it's partnering with uh one that is 
you know, number 793 being associated with, that's always, it's usually good for the coin that's a, you know, one or two pennies, you know, so I think probably in early days, it'll probably shoot up to typically what other um, ones in the past have done. Do you, can you think of a similar type of airdrop and, and uh, can you think about what the multiple normally is? Cause I'm feeling like it's just going to be a typical one, but with more support long-term because of all of the stellar holders. You know, they really range all over the place. There's airdrops all the time. There's, you know, there's clones or rewards. Uh, the, the ones that are, are, have been the most profitable or useful or advantageous have been, you know, those on DeFi utilizing uh, Ethereum um, or ex DEXs <clears throat> um, that, you know, didn't have a token or something like that and then suddenly did. Um, that's what I would say. Uh, but, you know, I, I mean, I could get super nerdy. If you were a Bitcoin holder back in the day, you get XLM for free. You got you got you got XRP for free. You got, you know, you got lots for free. Um, so it's hard to say. I mean, sometimes they're completely useless. Uh, they're worth nothing. And sometimes they're, you know, tens of thousands of dollars worth of airdrops. So, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. So I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I'm normally too lazy to move my coins anywhere mm -hmm. and frightened, frightened and lazy. <laughs> so I um, I usually keep them where they're at, but I am willing to yet again open another wallet. Because mm -hmm. how many wallets do I have? Way too many. More and more every week. More and more. I have a Poke wallet. You know, I have a, I have a Theta wallet. I have a Vthor wallet. <laughs> oh my god you're such a nerd you're such a nerd um i wish i was i'm not smart enough to have all these wallets and, yeah, but sure. it's like they all work like pretty much the same and i still pride myself in never reading a manual for anything so i don't I know how it. nerdy that is <laughs> um uh, speaking of nerds, I want to show something really funny, and this is probably a good time to do it, but I, I got to kind of send it up, set it up here. So um, this was great, you know, around the crypto space, and um, this will just introduce some levity to our conversation today. But, uh, you know, around the crypto space, it's kind of funny, like uh, people get on the bandwagon, uh, Twitter is very funny. You got, you know, people from projects sniping at each other, making comments and all sorts of jokes all the time, right? So it can be a really funny spot. But uh, yesterday at the, at, the, at the congressional hearings, Sam Bankman Freed, somebody got a, uh, a picture of his shoes and um, and just like very, very, you know, smart people um, sometimes, um, you know, he's kind of, uh, oh man, do I not have it? Oh, that's the wrong one. Give me one second. Okay. So uh, like a lot of smart people, um, you know, he's, he's a little disheveled. His hair is always messed up. Uh, he kind of looks like he just got out of bed and I don't think he sleeps more than just a few hours a, a night. So he's a very driven individual, you know, kind of a, a typical, you know, super IN, INTJ, something like that. But uh, anyway, somebody got a picture of his shoes um, and they're basically, hey, what's up with that? You know, why can't you tie your shoes correctly? And he basically says, I don't know what to say. That's the way they came. So he literally, uh, when he bought these shoes, he just left them kind of be how they were when he pulled them out of the box which was really funny um so people were making all sorts of jokes within this thread um and it started a new trend now amongst uh crypto people uh where they're tying their shoes like this and kind of uh, being ridiculous um and i'll stop sharing but uh if if anybody wants to go and check out this Twitter, it's funny. I think it's really hilarious. Sam, what would you say about this individual that just, you know, like a lot of brilliant individuals, just seems to like just completely kind of not like he's not normal, right? Not like your average person. Uh, Julie says, hey, Sam and Moo, my wife and I are new to crypto. A few weeks ago, you both gave us some great coins to get started with. So thank you. We're interested in investing in socially responsible projects. Can you give us any pointers? Thank you for all you do for your community. Yeah. Well, first of all, Julie, thanks for joining our little crew here. And I think it's um, fantastic that you want to help out and be socially responsible. Um, we do have a little bit of time to do research. I was thinking about that today, Julie. Um 
I've had copious amounts of money dropped in my lap for various reasons in the last four years since I invested in cryptos. Um, the people on the other side have not allowed me to put in as much money as I normally would. You know, like I totally wanted to dump in like 40 grand in X. <laughs> At point five, you know what I mean? But it's yeah. like, because I yeah. know when I see it, but you know what? I'm not allowed. And the reason why I'm not allowed is because they they do not want me to spend my time because they know what I'm like, right? Like, I don't need that much money to really exist. I don't have high flute and tastes or anything like that, right? So, you know, I would get into managing these large swaths of money in order to you know, try to help as many people as I can when really I need to use my talent as a psychic medium to help alleviate some of the anxiety and help the individuals like Julie and her family who want to utilize their crypto money to help um, humanity. Because boy, Mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, like we're going to need it. It's coming up shortly. So Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we can definitely all work together to help find stuff. So, So even though I'm not going to be put in that position on purpose because I know what I'm like, right? That I would want to make sure Mm -hmm. I dot all the I's, cross all the T's. And I mean, I can barely pick out my clothing right now. So I don't need like a billion dollars to have to manage or 150 million that I'll never spend. So you're trying to buy homeless shelters and you know, make sure kids got a meal in their belly before they go to school in the morning, that, right. those sorts of things that you have a heart for. So I feel like the group here will all be doing that. But the people on the other side just wanted me to give a little blab about that because sure. it's just not right now. Mm-hmm. But make sure that you cling to your crew here because I believe, Julie, that a lot of us are going to help each other out, including doing research when we're approached by some worthy organization. Because like I'm really big for supporting stuff where people are already doing the heavy lifting and they just need financing because maybe their backer has fallen by the wayside or something, you know, because with the worldwide depression coming on the way, there's going to be a lot of need where backers are going to be running out of money and not and have to cancel projects. And then benevolent crypto people can step in and take over that so um yeah so hang in there julie keep putting your money in cryptos you got a couple of years to go and um we can definitely you know we'll be hanging out and you can throw some ideas at me but for sure i think that we'll be doing a lot of live streams on that subject matter and then everybody will be using it as an opportunity to learn together so we'll just be changing directions more from being like 100 percent crypto to yeah a little bit of crypto but more like what the hell is going on in the world and you know, how are we going to deal with X, Y, and Z? Thanks, Sam. Uh, Joy expanded has a question here. Hey, Sam and Moo, I'm not really drawn personally to the existing metaverse uh, space. Uh, crypto boxes, sandbox, decentral lands are the ones I'm familiar with, but a new metaverse just launched in the last two weeks. That is somewhere that is somewhere I could see myself retreating to. And I'm curious what you think it's meta world based off of more realistic, beautiful places and the developers looking to do some interesting things. Would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, Joy Expanded, I don't know anything about this project, MetaWorld. Uh, I'll try and do a quick search on it. Sam? Um, I think that I have heard of this. I think somebody was asking me about it. Um, I do not have a way to look it up here on coin market cap. So it's probably very, very early and actually hasn't launched yet. Oh, we looked at this one before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, now I know what she's okay. Let me, uh, I'll try and just share this. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I think this is super early. I don't even know what yeah. they're doing. And um, there was an early project in 2016 on the blockchain called meta world. And that's what I thought you were talking about. Um, but, um, but yeah, I think this is the one she's talking about. I really don't know anything about this. Uh, I don't know. I'm not getting anything on this. Sam, thoughts? Yeah. Well, I think when we spoke about it before, and thanks for bringing that up. Cause I was thinking, well, geez, where would I have heard mm-hmm. of meta world before, but you're right. It has been brought up before. And, um, and I did feel like it was very early 
And, you know, if I was going to be investing money in any of the metaverse, I would pick the more established setups right now because the upside is pretty good there. I mean, why take a chance on MetaWorld and whether or not it's going to make it? It's so early on Mm -hmm. and it, it could be one of many that just never get off the ground. Because remember that to be able to develop and create stuff like this is not easy and you have to know what you're doing and because it's a whole new area of expertise on the blockchain um, with NFTs, et cetera, you know, there's a smaller and smaller pool of people who know how to develop this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And if MetaWorld can't keep and attract these individuals, I mean, if there's like some really big, exciting projects that they can be a part of, this -hmm. is what I feel the problem is going to be. Actually, in a lot of blockchain is you just don't have the manpower to make stuff go. For sure. 100%. One hundred percent. I would agree with you one hundred percent. Florence, Florence says, "Hey Sam and Moo, what do you guys think about Cartesi, CTSI?" So let's let's go. So Cartesi was one that I was kind of interested in, um, but you know the amount of influencers that I feel like were probably given coins to promote this thing kind of bothered me. Cool thing about it is, from a technological point of view, is uh, you know it utilizes some Linux ideas on the blockchain, which is really really great. Um, but you know if you bought this at its all time high, you're currently setting it you know fifty five fifty six percent down. Um, th- this is my feeling on it. I have so many. I don't need this one. Um, and they're calling it basically a layer two solution that integrates uh, uh, Linux. Okay, so it does and pro and standard programming environments to the to the uh, blockchain. So <clears throat> I just have too many already. Sam. Yeah, um, I have a lot of the a lot of that type too. Um, and is that sort of their claim to fame that they integrate with Linux, and is, and that's not very common? Yeah, and standard programming language, so you're able to bring kind of your normie devs over. Uh, but yeah. this is the thing, right? Um, also, being a technologist, like I don't know of a whole bunch of people building on this. It's not like I call up Bob, who's been a programmer for thirty years, or or this hotshot, you know, eighteen year old kid. It's not like they're programming on it. You know what I mean? They're not doing anything with it. So, you know, you know what I mean? So it's just, yeah. it's, uh, I'm not sure. Um, what do you think as far as the future? Do you get a good feeling from it? Or even though you would, don't hold it or and I wouldn't hold it, we just have too many already. Uh, yeah, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> <I'm generous. laughs> what have I done to you, Sam? What have I done to you? You like to gamble. No, that's not true. Hey, when you get that feeling, right? Yeah, when you get I that feeling. I know. I know. It's but I control myself and I don't yeah. usually drop like but I mean the node was different. That was, was different talking it about was. dropping large sums of money. But that was you know, it was time to do something like that. Yeah. Um uh, I was I'm at that point. But yeah, I'm just looking at let me show you guys my screen. So sure. you know what I'm staring at here intently. So with Cartesi, um, it has a pretty high volume, actually. It's number 211. And and that is part of the problem is that, yeah, there's a lot of people, you know, who aren't building on it. But right now we're in a speculative market phase. And um, I do think that if someone's holding it, they should probably continue to hold it because, it is going to turn around and go back to, I'm just looking at the chart here. I'm like, oh yeah, it'll go back over. It's all time high. Right. Um, that's how I feel about that at number 211. So that's what I'm getting from that. Maybe the fact that it's a smart contract platform that um, regular people can use because what I was talking about just before we clicked on that question was we were talking about there being a problem keeping developers on because it's a very small niche who know how to do blockchain. And then boom, the Cartesi question comes up, which I had no idea they integrated Linux. And I'm like, hey, I did a blab before that. So let's clue in here. This is probably going to mean something because I said that not realizing Cartesi was next on the list to talk about or the fact that it, its claim to fame is that it integrates a regular so that your average Joe, 
developer who's working at XYZ company who doesn't know anything about blockchain doesn't all of a sudden have to learn a whole new process in order mm -hmm. to um, be involved in it. And, you know, I would say this about Cartesi. It's not like this is a nonsense, uh, you know, if I gave, gave the impression that this is a nonsense project or something or not a real project, it I, that is that would be incorrect. Um, it is a real project. Uh, it's got some serious uh, backing behind it. It's 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 a very serious project. I just don't personally know uh, anyone kind of building on it. Um, but it is a real project. Uh, their Medium articles are wonderful. Um, and, um, you know, be interesting to see where this one goes uh, in the future, for sure. Um, I just don't want to add another token. Um <laughs> I don't want to yeah. And there's a lot, listen, there's a lot that have similar upsides. I only lose my mind if like there's a standout, you know? Yeah. Right. And, and it's like, I, I feel like I'm right on the edge of something like really going up a lot quickly. And then that's when I get the all, <gasps> I must have it now. Right. Um, Cartesi, I'm like, okay, well, you know, if you have it, don't sell it. Cause you know, I see that it's going to go on a nice little run. Me and too go back to its all time high. Me too. It seems that, oh yeah, there is going to be some functionality, especially for the fact that the problem people are going to run into is again, manpower. I mean, it's a nightmare if you run a restaurant right now. It is a nightmare if you are a startup company and you're looking for actual on the ground blockchain developers and, and like engineers. I mean, you're, do you know how much you have to pay them now? This is very... This is turning into um, a bit of a nightmare for some people. So listen, if you've got a young man or woman in your household who is looking for some direction in their life and don't know what to take in school, etc., cetera, um, I, I say introduce some blockchain to them. There's so many different avenues you can go in. Like I could work in blockchain if I want. I do work in blockchain. It's just, yep, I'm, a, I'm a medium, I'm a medium, right? So yep. that's how I do it. But also, you know, I tie in my finance and my compliance experience because some stuff I can look at and go, oh yeah, no, you don't want to touch that. Cause I think those guys could probably end up in jail. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, Sam's absolutely right. Listen, a lot of these projects are just, you know, it used to be that you had to have a very high level of competency. Um, there's, they're hurting. All these projects are hurting for competent people. You could literally, you know, up in the Psychic Nerds Discord, we have an education set, uh, section. Chainlink alone, right? I mean, you can spend multiple hours every day learning uh, how to do all sorts of crazy things inside of Chainlink. Um, and especially if you just have a minor compliance background, a uh, lot, uh, administration background, you're an executive. Um, you know, you're an IT person, you could literally walk into many of these jobs like right now, like today. Um, you just kind of have to be able to spell blockchain uh, a little bit. And that would be it. So um, absolutely, I agree with Sam. Um, Stuart says, when will silver go into price discovery? Um, when you see the Western societies, the first of them began to, their fiat currencies beginning to go into meltdown. So that's when you're going to see some more price discovery with things like gold and silver, um, just because people will begin to mistrust and they'll just be searching for some sort of um, measure to accept for, you know, payment, et cetera. And um, unfortunately, you know, gold and silver paper will be doing a lot of that, but it's still going to send the price up quite a bit. Uh, because, you know, probably half the people are going to be demanding delivery where there was a time where nobody demanded delivery. But now you've got so much rumors about um, there not being enough in supply, which is true. So how they do stuff, this is so crazy. Like, I'm so excited to see blockchain taking over the world of finance. I'm getting so much information every day. No wonder it's so hard for me to get stuff done. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. You don't even want to run a camera around my apartment. It looks like just somebody who just is halfway through everything and then just leaves it there. And I'm just like, this is so not me. What is going on? Uh, but, but then, you know, people are writing me and telling me like these crazy exact things that I tell them. And even people I talk to just out in the public, 
sometimes they get the look on their face and I can tell like the little rat wheel in their head is going like this because yeah. I know I've said something to them that they're like, Oh my God. Oh my God. How does she know that? Right. But they don't want to say anything because they don't know me. So anyways, that's what's going on here. So um, I, I'll do my best to keep it together between now and Christmas. <laughs> if you guys I mean, do this crypto like rough spot or whatever that's going on out there in the, in the universe. What time frame for the Comex to fly apart? I think maybe it could be this Christmas. Okay. Yeah, I did see holidays. Okay. Uh, Sam and Moo, do you have any sympathy for Cello? Cello. So, you know, this is an interesting one, but I don't know if it's necessary. It's definitely not one that I hold. Crypto made for mobile. It basically, it's a mobile uh, platform. Uh, and you can plug in basically DeFi. Um, but I don't know much about this. Um, I mean, crypto payments accessible to anyone via mobile phone. I mean, I can already do that with uh, just about anything I have in my phone. Um, as far as a, a something that you can have on your phone that plugs in directly to like DeFi, I, I much prefer something like uh, Dharma. But uh, there's money behind this. Um, uh, I just don't have any of these. And, uh, you know, if you're sitting in it, you're probably down 60% from its all-time high. I just, uh, I don't know. Sam, thoughts? Yeah, you are down 60% on your from the all-time high. If you own this, um, I do see that. And, and that was the first thing that came to mind. That's interesting that you said that there's a lot of money in this because that was the impression that I got. Yeah, that huge backers. They, yeah, and they would be making sure that this was going to work out. So again, another one that, hey, I think there's some stuff that has a better upside. I, I'm looking at the chart here while I'm, sure. I'm talking to you. And um, yeah, just looking at like something like um, Phantasma, for example, I would buy that one instead. Like that's yeah. more of an up and comer. But that cello, if you look on GitHub, that is super busy. So it backed up what I saw about it was that it was... It was a busy crypto. It had some big backers who weren't going to allow it to fail, i.e., you know, when you see stuff on like CNBC, like that's what I'm talking about when you get these big names, like people yep. can call up the person at CNBC and say, hey, you know, I got a crypto for you, right? Yeah. And send them the stuff and then get them to talk about it. And it's like, and, and the thing about it is that, you know, it's free advertising, but you, if somebody is advertising, there's usually a disclaimer down at the bottom. You know, these guys are, it, it would be the same as me accepting the um, coins on the back end there from those people emailing me saying that mm -hmm. if I endorse it or whatever, and then acting like it's a, a good or a bad. Like when I'm looking at a crypto, I'm telling you guys my actual impression of it. I'm not swayed one way or the other if i own mm -hmm. it i say that i own it because sometimes with people that makes a difference sure you know and it is good to know that maybe if i'm impartial or more hopeful towards a project if i own it um yeah so cello if you own it don't sell it um i wouldn't buy it i would go and buy phantasma instead yeah um i would do the same thanks sam um Omar says, uh, hey, Sam and Moo, we, have we talked about solar? Your thoughts and blabs are greatly appreciated. So solar, let's go take a look at solar. Soul Razor. Currently down 96% from its all-time high. And let's see, 1.2 million trading volume. Uh, what this is is a launch pad. This is a launch pad for Solana, but it's it's not one of the bigger ones. Um, the a lot, many of the launch pads, especially the gaming launch pads, have has have literally went into outer space, um, and have been extremely uh, good things to be in. Um, <clears throat> this one, I don't know. I don't know. I don't mess around with this one. Haven't haven't done anything here. Um, thoughts, Sam. Well, I think that um, all of these will in early days follow it. And I wouldn't say necessarily to stay in for a long time, you know, if you got into something like this. And I worry about this one because it's so new and its volume is only 1.2 million. 
Mm -hmm. So, you know, it could end up going out of business. It is down 96% from its all time high. And like I said, it has a really low volume. Now, when the money starts pouring, pouring, like literally pouring into these projects again, then you'll see like it probably is going to move up again to like between 10 and $20. But I wouldn't touch it just because there's so many other tasty deals out there. Like look at Cardano at a buck thirty three. Oh my god, that's that's a very tasty deal for mm -hmm. you know um, when you're looking at the up and comers. Polkadot at twenty seven, um, Dogecoin, and you know they'll be blabbing about that again, and that's under eighteen cents. Polygon did extremely well um, during all of this upheaval. At it's at two dollars and twenty cents, but like you said, it's early days for Polygon, and you felt it was also going to have a really good run for this part of the year and probably early into 2022 yeah. as well. So sure. um, I wouldn't buy solar just for that reason that, you know, I do feel like it's going to go up. So if you check on it, like three months from this blab, you'll be like, aha, I did double in price, but it's like, yeah, but look at the other stuff in the market, right? Like, right. look at how much is your Phantasma now? Is that like 15 bucks? You know, right. did it right? Exactly. It's going to get yeah. interesting. Um, number seven's got a very uh, long question here, detailed about uh, strong notes. Hey, Sam and Mood, the following question is is reference to the creation of multiple strong box notes. Since newcomers are limited to 100 per wallet address first, if we create a second or a third wallet within MetaMask, is there a possibility of losing access to these wallets in the future? Hence, losing access to our node and node rewards? Mm -hmm. Question mark. Now, being that MetaMask is a hot wallet on its own, is it best to connect to a hardware wallet such as Ledger or Trezor for additional security? Yes, you should always connect, always use a, a hardware wallet to operate a software wallet, always. Um, unless it's a software wallet that is really just a transient wallet, you only move things there to just move it out. Um, but otherwise, yes, uh, something like MetaMask needs to be secured with hardware. Something like Exodus needs to be secured with hardware. That being said, I don't know how to answer your question about StrongBlock. I have no idea. Uh, I haven't really looked into it. Sam, thoughts? I um, don't feel like they're going to take advantage of that if they catch people with a couple of wallet addresses. I think they're sort of alluding to the fact that because they're limited to 100 per wallet. And I don't know if that um, 10 strong nodes per, like it is, is that 10 strong nodes in that one wallet? Cause it's one, that would be 100 strong. So, and I'm like, wow, 10 on one wallet. Ugh, that's quite a bit unless you, well, I mean, if you're going in with a bunch of people, that's different. Um, but again, uh, I wouldn't worry about losing my strong from that point of view. I just think that strong may fall into a scenario like what I pointed out. But at that point, it doesn't matter because, like I said, if you paid $5,000 for your strong node, but you made $150,000 from it, then, and as each person comes on, it's the same with the return on cryptos. I mean, some people get involved with a newer cryptocurrency that's going to pay them, you know, 12% return every month but by the time the herd arrives you know by the time retail is here it'll probably be down to like five or six percent it's just the way that things are going to go and i can see that being the same way with strong so um and again like muant says you should should secure it with any of your soft wallets with uh, your ledger or treasure Thanks, Sam. Uh, Mixed ASIC says, thanks. When will KYC for whitelisting and airdrops and nodes start being inevitably inevitably exploited? I would say always. Anytime yeah. you give your information to a central source, it's going to be exploited uh, for one reason or another. Thoughts, Sam? Yeah, well, it's been going on for a while. And again, that's why you have to do your research, um, like with who you're giving your, doing your KYC with. You know, who are the people that are running that organization? Are they hiding who they are? Do they have like a, is there, is their address like really? I mean, thank God for Google Maps. Yeah. Right. Thank yep. God for Google. You can check on some stuff before you start giving out your, you know, private information and taking pictures of your passport and stuff and sending it off. Look, you know, if I wanted to be a criminal and get people's information, all I'd have to do is offer some like really tasty crypto with really fantastic <laughs> rewards for new people. And then, oh, but you have to do your KYC. Yep. 
man. Absolutely. And then I could just pick and through, through, choose through the passports and become any person I want. <laughs> you know, so again, you got to be careful with um, who you're doing this to. That's why I prefer to do business with people who are in countries where the police will come and get you if you yeah. do that kind of stuff. I mean, I always intend on being in a place that has a very high level rule of law. And, you know, so I would expect anybody else who's living in that type of society that they would also mind their P's and Q's because again, you know, things can get dicey for you when you start doing that kind of stuff in countries that frown upon stealing people's money based on investments, right? Yeah. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate that. Uh, this next one is from William Penn. Will the city coins like Miami, uh, so Miami coins, do well based on the politics of the state they are located? Uh, I don't know, William Penn. I wish I had an answer for that. William Penn, what I would say to that is if you look at blockchain and you look at lawmakers uh, from local leaders uh, to regional all the way up to you know a national, um, it's really an issue that it, it's not defined by any sort of political lines. Uh, you have very pro crypto and blockchain people on the left and the right. So um, that's what I would say. Um, that's what I would say to that question. And there's wonderful websites if you want to go. Um, I, I, I've looked at them before where you can see uh, these sledges. Um, sledge <laughs> I can't speak. Uh, if you wanted to look at pro crypto, pro blockchain uh, candidates or people in politics. Um, that's what I would say. Craig says, hello, Sam and Moo. Moo, do you know anything about Supra Oracles? And do you know if it will be competition for Chainlink? No, there's no competition for Chainlink. Um, if you look at the quality of advisors, uh, the quality of programmers, the, the necessary innovations that are being created almost weekly and monthly at Chainlink, they are you're literally looking at the best of the best of the best not even in the oracle space but in, in entire crypto um so uh, no i don't i don't think super oracles will ever um even somewhat compete with Chainlink. Chainlink dominates the market uh in oracle space and they dominate the market with a lot of technology and a lot of other cool things too um sam any thoughts about that um nope. i think that was a mid question Okay. Uh, Anna says, hey, Sam and Moo, thanks for all you do. I'm excited about my ADA, Tezos, DOT, XLM, Matic, XYO, EOS, KNC, REN, Loopering, The Graph, and AMP Holdings. If you could invest further in any of these, which would it be? Multiples is always a plus. Thank you. Right now, I'd say Matic. Sam, your thoughts? Yeah. Matic, um, probably like, gosh. Tezos has been coming up a lot this week because it did have a big down. Next, it is one of those ones that you can just you can stake it till you make it. Yeah, right. Bake your tezzies, stake them, bake them, whatever. Your one year return on the actual Tezos token is only uh, one hundred and thirty five percent which is like, boo, with the crypto market is like, boo. But again, um, you know, it's high, it's all time high. Just in October was $9. So I hope nobody FOMO'd in on that. That would suck. Um, but again, I, I've i even considered buying more Tezos myself. And when I do readings, I'll probably add that to my reading list again, because I, I'm really liking that the price of Tezos and I'm really feeling like it's on the cusp of just like Dot's going to do really well as well and Matic. So that would be another one. So I'm on board with Matic and on and, and just Tezos. Yeah. Next, ASICs got another question. Thanks for everything. I sense everyone trying to quickly optimize their portfolios to the point of making mistakes while doing so. At what point is is it greed versus readiness for whenever the next wave hits? Um, I can't answer this question. I mean, majority of people I've met in crypto, I would say, are here for greedy reasons. Um, so I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't know. Sam, what would you say to this question? Um, I think when you start trying to pump timing and looking at flipping coins from this to this to this, it's like, 
oh, I'm going to buy these ones. And then, you know, when they take, when they go on the big run and then they take a break and then other ones go on a big run, a person gets upset and angry, you know, oh, why didn't I know about that? Then I could have sold all these ones and then I could have jumped over here. It's like, listen, man, nobody's going to do that for you, right? Like you can do your own no. research and stuff, but I explained pretty early on that um, the market is down here. I'm getting out up here for different coins and tokens at different times. And it's going to be like this all the way through. And if you think I'm spending my time, time and moving this to that, to this, to that, I mean, I'm not. And that's when I think is when greed overtakes, you know, when you feel so terrible about missing out on something that it like, it makes you angry and Oh, why didn't I know? It's just like, man, just take a chill pill just be here with your cup of tea like I am. I'm well spread out. I'm ready when Stellar goes on another run again. I got my bags packed there. I, I finally, I had gotten a decent amount of Matic now. So I'm really excited about it going up. And, you know, XYO got it at half a penny, had a nice little pullback, watching that for its next run. So just, you know, when you, when you um, are invested like I am, and like most of the people here, we're all pretty relaxed. And if you find, you know, if you find that you're doing cryptos and you're getting like angry because you're trying to do this, like hopscotching around, you know, that's when I think that um, your greed is overtaking. I mean, we're going to be here for a long time, right? You have a lot of time left in this market. So, <clears throat> you know, you just need to relax and not be so worried. And how much better do we all feel knowing that if you missed Doge, now there's XYO and Reef is still coming and, you know, and it's all going to happen. I'm excited. Everyone was thinking of jumping off bat and I'm like, no, no, no. And then like literally the next week just goes parabolic. So we're all being very patient and understanding with our little laggards. And uh, I can hear the hoof beats. The herd is coming. Yeah. Thanks for saying all that, Sam. I think that's a good way to say it. Um, this is another Veritasium one. Veritasium is at 400% on uh, getting U.S. patent. Where is it going? Thanks for everything. Just any more inf information, Sam, on Veri? Um, no. No, I think I said what I had to say about it earlier, and uh, it was very exciting news. And, again, just goes to show you that, you know, if this is what I was saw seeing – um, isn't that crazy? Like when you see, like, it's like, sure. I tell you the story is still there. Like the result of the story is still there. So, I mean, if you were someone who bought, I know, uh, one of our comrades here, um, jumped in and bought some very at like five bucks. Cause he asked me, he goes, did you still see it going like way up? Wait. And I was like, yes. So he bought a whole bunch more and I think he's still holding those and probably now's a good time. Um, this next question here is about exceed me. Hello, Sam. What would you say is a full bag of XED? And do you have any blabs on where the price may be over in the next one to two years? Well, again, you know, um, high risk one. Uh, if you're looking at putting money into something that um, has uh, built like some really nice support and is on in the metaverse and uh, is it's early days. Um, it's only available on KuCoin and Gate.io and it does a little bit of volume on uh, CoinX. Actually, KuCoin is really small volume. It does most of its volume actually double uh, Gate.io on Uniswap. So, and uh, th that's where the lazy people like me go is Uniswap. But uh, yeah, it's down 68% from its all-time high. And uh, yeah, I, I was talking about rolling some gala like income into Exceed Me just to, again, take advantage of this being one that's very, very early. It only has a volume of 1.4, 1.5 million. But again, you know, guys, keep in mind... If I was like 70 years old, I wouldn't be doing that with my crypto money. You know, it's hot, much higher risk. Um, but what do I think the price is going to be? Uh, 
you know what? I think that it'll make it into like the double digit dollars, like over 10 bucks. So, you know, at the price that it is now, what was it? It's 62 cents. So, I mean, that's a good price for it. It's not, you know, and you're not FOMOing in. Thanks, Sam. Uh, this one is from Kwaku. Hi, guys. Thoughts on Hector Dow price, future price. Thanks. Let's go take a look. Um, that's weird. The chart doesn't work on this one. Hmm. Very strange. Let's try that again. Uh, it pops up for a second, then goes away. I don't know if you're seeing that. Yeah, <laughs> I see not. that. Uh, trading volume is uh, 22 million there. Um, market cap and the price seem to be completely differential. Um, this is over on Spooky Swap, which I hope people are getting used to using. Um, Hector is a decentralized storage protocol based on the HEC token, collateralized and backed by the Hector DAO. HEC will be the reserve. Heck will be the reserve currency on of Phantom. Um, trying to open up the web page here. Um, I don't know anything about this. Uh, currently sitting at about a hundred bucks. Thoughts, Sam? Hmm. Algorithmic reserve currency algorithm. It's the reserve currency on Phantom. But I don't know if that's the case. I mean, that's what it says on Coin Market Cap. Uh, but uh -huh. I, I have a, I have a hard time believing that. So yeah, yeah, that's my, that's where I'm. That's where you can tell I'm questioning that. Oh it yeah, it's the reserve. You probably got yeah. the same feeling as I read that. Like, mm, I don't think so. Um, yeah, and so. I mean, I'm not a developer or anything like that. Um, and it's on all of these swaps, but is it what exchange is it, is it on? Um, well, it's on it's on a lot of the phantom type dexes. Oh, so it's you're on your right. spooky swap, your spirit swap, uh, your your. I mean, it's on Hotbit, uh, yeah. which is like a normal exchange, but looks yeah. like mostly spooky swap. Um, yeah. And once again, guys, it would probably behoove you to get out there and play on the phantom blockchain and and use this dex spooky swap just saying um anywho i don't know i'm not feeling this i don't know <laughs> i'm gonna say no okay um what exchange can i get soul on so julie this is a great uh learning moment here for some people in crypto so you can simply oh crap which one were you asking about um, so, okay, so we can just simply go to coin market cap here, type in the ticker or the name we want. Um, and if you just scroll down, you'll see um, that it's available on these different DEXs and sexes. So these different exchanges, um, it's available down here. So that helps. And then you can just, you know, you can just simply just cl click one of these and it'll take you to the, uh, to the, uh, the listing. Um, same thing with gate IO, which is a centralized exchange. That'll just take you right to the listing. Hope that helps. Um, hey, Sam and Moo, what are your thoughts on VVS finances? It's backed by crypto.com. Uh, VVS finances. Uh, I would have to look. Let's go look. Let's yeah. See. And if it's backed by crypto.com, is it backed by crypto.com or are they using crypto.com to advertise? Um, it says VVS Finance is a decentralized finance and automated market uh, making platform on the Kronos network uh, created by crypto.com. So, all right. Um, well, they're going to flog it to death. So, yeah. get ready. Yeah. <laughs> VVS, right? Yeah. Yeah. VVS finance. Yeah. They'll probably flog that to death. What is it? Oh yeah. It's like worth nothing. The 24 hour trading. Ah, oh, but look at the nut. Uh, I saw the total coin supply and I went, wah, wah, wah. It was like UFO, right? Where it, there's a tremendous upside, but mm -hmm. you know, you got to take profits on stuff like that. Cause they just created so many coins. Yeah. It's down about 65% though. So, I mean, if you're looking for an up and comer, I feel like they're going to flog it. And a lot of people are going to be using crypto.com. They have a credit card as well. Um, 
it's it's going to be you know a lot of retail a lot of like just regular everyday people i've had people ask me about crypto.com like the guy i told you who's like all excited sure. he brought up crypto.com well, it's everywhere. I mean, they bought a, the advertising is everywhere. They bought a sports yeah. arena. Uh, I mean, you know, <clears throat> I'm getting the same thing. A lot of normie people are asking me about crypto.com. Uh, this is the last question. I can't believe we made it all the way through. Uh, yeah. Any pr price projections for crypto.com short and long term? <laughs> Thanks, guys. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, I think that it's similar to like a Binance situation. So, you know, that would be a good buy. Yeah, okay. it looks like it's corrected back quite a bit. Could you have to go on crypto.com to buy their CRO coin? Um, can you avoid it's them? actually available on Coinbase. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, so they, they've got something going on. I haven't looked at the links, but I think a lot of the same investors in uh, Coinbase or Coinbase Ventures have invested in crypto.com. I think that's why. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hey. Great questions, you guys. Uh, I'll be doing a live stream right now in just a few minutes over on the Psychic Nerds if you're a $25 member. And Sam will do the Psychic Nerd show tomorrow at th around the th which rotation? See you later when. <laughs> it's the later one, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard. Thanks, Sam. All right. Bye for now.